Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with designer Emerson Matsuuchi and Lynn Boutelet from Plan B Games. And Emerson is the designer of Century Spice Road, which he is going to present an overview of. Or I don't know, before you get to the actual game, do you sure. want to talk about the history of the design? Oh. Because, of course, this was it's first introduced as yes. a caravan, yes. sort of a, an experiment. <laughs> and I know it's the game design itself has had a history going from Plaid Hat, yes. Z-Man to others. Yeah, so I can, I can how definitely. How does this go out? And of course, you're wearing NASCA games, uh, which yes. is not <laughs> involved with this, but. Is it what? on the back well, of the is. box? Yes, 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 it is. It's on the back of the box. OK. Yeah. They got to check. This is the first time Emerson has actually seen a published or oh, yeah. this is my first production time, yeah. version of the game. Yeah. So we get a debut yeah, they, here. It's it, new to him. It is. This is the first time I'm seeing this. It, it looks fantastic. I like this mat here. Yeah, but going back to the history of it, you're, you're right. It did have a very colorful history. I first <laughs> presented it to Plat Hat back in November. So this was BGGCon 2014, Okay. I believe. Yeah, it was BGGCon 2014. I presented a very... Uh, it was a cube pushing game. And the thing is, I know that Plat Hat was really uh, focused on thematic games. Uh, but Colby said that he wanted to see everything in you know, all of my prototypes. That's right, because so they published Spectre Ops from yes. you, so you had a history with them already. Yes. All right, of course. So, but the thing is, uh, when I went into the playtest with them, or when to show them the design, I immediately, I have the bias that they're not going to want this. So I came in and it says, Colby, this is a themeless, soulless, cute pushing <laughs> Euro game. You're not going to want it. And, but he insisted on, on playing it. That's right. So then after he played it, you know, he was uh, enamored with it. And so it was going to be published under Plat Hat initially, uh, and then the acquisition with Z-Man happened, or with uh, with F2Z F2Z Entertainment. Yes. Yep. So then it was going to get rebranded, uh, and but they were still going to retain the two identities. So there was going to be the Spice Road version as well as the Gollum version, which was Plat Hat's in, um, imagining of it. Okay. So sort of we're gonna, we're going to set this in a world. Yes. That you know, some way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so they had the alternate. They did full artwork on both of them. So all the components had different artwork, entirely. Yeah. Uh, now that Asmodee had acquired F2Z Entertainment, yeah. that uh, was a big year. <laughs> yes, that was that was a very big year. So uh, Sophie Gavel, who was the president of F2Z Entertainment, um, was able to negotiate a. A, I guess a beginning yes. for her company, mm -hmm. so so there was no non there was no non compete clause in the contracts, mm -hmm. so she was immediately uh, able to start Plan B right. as a company. Uh, she took a very talented staff. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> very very passionate staff. And we took great designer too. <laughs> Uh, but part of the deal was that she takes pretzel games and caravan. Right. So. She was. She. Uh, I spoke with Sophie at at Nuremberg at the Spielvarn Messe Fair, and she was like, she had to have this game. She was like, this has to be the start for Plan B. Mm -hmm. Not. She. She was going to start with a follow-up company. Right. And of course, you need a game right. if you're actually going to launch a company. And right. she was like, I want this. Mm -hmm. I have to do this. Yes. So that was sort of all the negotiations that come come about with any sale, right. yeah. everything's negotiable right. to a certain point. Right. So. Yeah, at Plan B we were so addictive to the game that we wanted to start with this one because for us we felt in, fall in love. Uh, the first time we played it was like falling in love mm -hmm. at first sight. So yeah. 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 Okay. Now I know this is, uh, Spice Road is the launching title, the sort of the first of a trilogy, uh, due out June 2017, and then those another in 2018, 2019. How did this evolution come about, uh, oh. that there is now a trilogy? <laughs> well, Sophie said that she wanted um, this, she saw a lot of potential in this game. And so she asked me, can we expand this further? Okay. Well, actually, um, before we do that, maybe sure. we should actually explain the game. Sure. And then from that, you can talk about what has derived from that. Okay. Okay. So, what are we doing here? Okay, so this is a themeless, soulless, <laughs> cue-pushing Euro game. That's right. <laughs> I've heard that. Where each player is going to control a caravan, and you are tr taking spices, trading them from post to post, and uh, and you are trading them in to get victory points. Okay. So there are two rows of cards. Uh, so here you have what we call the market row, and then here we have the, uh, the victory point row, I guess. So... The market row is all about exchanges, yeah. all about making deals with people. Yeah, and okay. Some, some okay. Yeah. So and then the uh, so what was this row? I guess the victory point. The victory point. The 
yeah. victory yeah. point yeah. row? The victory sales row. row. I don't know if you what it, what it says in the rules, but you have some cubes that you're going to sell, yeah. spices as yes. it were, yes. in order to make some money. Correct. Okay. And now we each start with two cards as well. Correct. Okay. Each the same. Player has the same card yep. to begin okay. with. So everyone, yep. all the players start off the same, but as the game progresses, you everyone's going to have a different set of cards, so that their abilities will be different from the other players as the game goes on. Uh, in fact, that there are no duplicates of any of these trade cards. So if you have a trade card, you're the only one that has that particular right. trade okay. available to them. Okay. So we each start with a caravan that's going to start with some ginger yes. on it. Yep. Yes. Uh, first player. Gets yeah. a few, gets one less. Yeah, we yeah. try to balance, uh, to balance the number of cube that you start with, just to make sure that uh, there's no the first player doesn't have the advantage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little offset for the first player yes. advantage. Okay. And so. now on a turn, you've got one of four actions. Correct. So what are you? What are the possibilities? So one of the things you can do is you can play a card. So you start off with the two cards. One of them will get you two cubes to add to your caravan. Mm -hmm. The other will allow you to make two upgrades. So you can upgrade from ginger to saffron, or from saffron to... Is it cardamom. Cardamom? I'm sorry, I, I just went with colors in, the, in all my prototypes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and cardamom to, to, to cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. That's yes. right. So, okay. so you can do two upgrades. That's one of your actions is you could play a card from your hand, you place it down onto the table. Okay. The okay. second action you could take is that you could take a card from the market row. So let's say I wanted this card. This card is actually free, and I simply just put it into my hand to yep. play on a subsequent round, which in okay. this case, this card will allow me to trade four yellow or four gingers yep. for two cardamoms. Yes. Okay. Okay. So and you this slide, just like you did, you slide the cards and you put the new one. Correct. Okay. On but, but let's say if I really wanted this card over here, I can take this card, but I would have to place a cube on all the cards that come before it to take this card and put it into my hand. Okay. And whenever someone takes that card, they get the Correct. cubes right. on the right. yeah. So sometimes if there are cubes on a card, sometimes that's enticing enough to mm -hmm. take the card, even if you feel like you don't need it at that time. Yeah. Okay, so that's the second action you could take. The third action is that you can, per you can claim one of these victory point cards. So for instance, if I had four saffrons, I could trade those in, put them back to the supply, and claim this card. If you claim a card in a row that actually has coins on the top, you also claim the coins as well. Yes. Silvers being one victory points, golds being three victory points. Yep. Okay. okay. And then the fourth thing that you can do is, uh, you, as the game progresses, you're going to be playing out your cards. The, one, the last action you could take is you can rest and take all your cards back into your hand. Okay. So you're like building your your machine of uh, spice right. production. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a hand building game. It's a hand building game, exactly. Not deck building, because you have everything available to you. Correct. Yeah. Correct. There's no shuffling. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we continue play until what point? Oh, until one player, well, in, in, let's say in a four player game, okay. until one player gets their fifth victory point card, then all other players get one last turn. Okay. And, and then just add up the numbers, yeah. points for coins. Correct. And any non yellow cubes in your caravan is worth one point at the end of the game. Okay. okay. And that's it. All right. That's yeah. it. Yes. The, the rules are very brief, and yes. we yeah. have just page. covered them all here. Yep. Um, so how did this originate to begin with? With, uh, if you're saying yeah. the themeless, soulless, it you, was. cube pushing. <laughs> I, I mean, you don't usually sit around and say, I want to make a themeless, yeah. soulless, cube pushing game. Well, I do, I do enjoy Euros. Okay. Uh, there are lots of Euros that I really enjoy. Uh, in fact, um, for me, the sweet spot is like a light Euro. Uh, like I like to play them with my family. My family's favorite game is Stone Age, so we really enjoy okay. those type of games. And I noticed that uh, when I play other games like you know, Lords of Waterdeep or Kalos or any of those Euros, there's always like a trading element. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to take just that part because I enjoyed that part and just distill it down. It's like, okay, how can I make a game with just this one aspect, this one element? Mm -hmm. right. And that's where this, this came about. Okay. And what has evolved from that into the next games in the line? I know they're slightly different yes. in some, in some yes, ways. They're, they're actually going to be significantly different, but it's supposed to have the similar experience. Yeah. Okay. So, because I enjoy the aspect of trading, yes. and getting goods, and trading them in for victory points at set collection. There's something a little psychologically addicting about that. Right. So the other things will introduce different mechanisms, but the core concept of trading for victory points will be will be the same, but mechanically they will be different. Yeah. Uh, and how they intermingle and mix with each other, because I know that's one thing that people are curious mm -hmm. about, right. I can't talk about it at the moment. No, okay. no, but right. it will be fully <laughs> mixable. And um, the only thing that we can say that is, 
the next one might have a more, yeah. but we'll okay. see. All right. Because it is, it's a very basic system yeah. in there. And um, I mean, some people reference it in terms of splendor, where it has that element, like it has these micro actions. Yes. It's this little thing that doesn't seem like anything, mm -hmm. and but then it piles up. Yeah. Which is sort yeah, of like you, your life, you I guess. Yeah. I like, have, I like yeah. that terminology, micro yeah. actions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because initially, I mean, every little thing is like, okay, I get two cubes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. But you need to do. It's like on three there. It's on there. Yep. Yeah. It okay. Goes, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you as you were going to say. No, no problem. No problem. I was just saying that um, in those type of games, it's going so fast. Also, it's fast paced. You can you play one game, you want to play again. So it's really the kind of uh, addictive game that you can have. And if it's in a Euro, you do tradings. It's really, really addictive. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, don't think I had anything else. Uh, potato chip games. That's what I call them. No. Potato chip games. Potato chip. You games. don't stop with one. Yeah, right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that. Yes, yeah. it's exactly that. Um, and the well, you see a mat here. Um, so this is a, an exclusive mat that will be available uh, on pre-orders that will open in April. Uh, so in the box you don't have the mat, but you'll be able to have it uh, from the website. You do have the cups though, yes, and the, the, cups, the metal coin. Everything else, but the mat. So uh, on the website it's going to be available in April uh, at the opening of the pre-orders and at shows also. If right. we have some left, right. we'll see. Okay. Well, thanks for the overview. Uh, on here, it's very different from. I mean, when initially people said, "Wait, Designer Specter Ops has this." I mean, do you do you have a a style that you like in terms of design, or is it just sort of you see what comes? I'm well. You might need to edit this out, but people call me like a game whore because I <laughs> there's no game that I don't like. I okay. just I like all genres of games. I like all I like party games. I like heavy Euro games all over the board okay. when it comes to that. Yeah, well, I mean that's understandable, and sort of the things go in the funnel, yeah. and you yeah. see what comes out. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. influences from everywhere, so I I can yeah I can appreciate that <laughs> a lot. So okay, so. thank you very much for the overview, and uh, we'll see the game out in June. Yes. And you see it out right now, yes. down here for you. <laughs> Surprise. My first time, yes. Surprise. First time for me. All right. Thanks very much. All right. Thank no you. No problem.